Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now going to answer question number four from the June 2024 Pure Mathematics P1 paper from uh, Edexcel International A level. This question here we were told about a curve y equals x squared plus kx minus nine. That's called say, uh, curve C1. And a second curve C2, which is y equals negative three x squared minus five x plus k where k is a constant, given that c1 and c2 meet at a single point p, show that k squared plus 26k plus 169 is equal to zero. Okay, so now, in this kind of question, what we're used to seeing really is about curves and straight lines. Okay, and a curve and a straight line, for example, you'd have your quadratic curve and you'd have your straight line. Okay, and the straight line would either... Uh, not touch the curve at all or cut it in two places or it would it would meet it once in in that case it would be a tangent so sometimes they'll say one uh you know they meet at one point or they'll say the the line is a tangent to the curve right? but in this case no we have a curve and we have a uh, we have two quadratics one of them is a smiley face one of them is a frowny face which is a bit more which is narrow. Minus 3x squared will be a kind of narrow shape and it will be upside down compared to the first one. Let me just make that a bit better. So it will be a narrower shape and a bit more um, will be upside down basically. So these, they could be like any, all these cases where it would be something where it could touch at one place. So it could either intersect twice or there could be no intersection or it would touch one place. In this case, you would say it's a tangent tangents are straight lines but they touch it they have one solution you know, that, those are the cases where there'll be one solution between these two okay that kind of situation here so we've got to find um we've got to show that for the case where they just touch in one place that we will end up with an equation k squared plus 26k plus 169 equals zero so as for all um situations where we're trying to find the intersection between two different functions we have to solve the equations simultaneously okay so what we have to do is solve these two equations simultaneously so we have two equations y equals x squared plus kx plus nine or minus nine sorry be very careful when you write your don't do copy errors otherwise you mess up your whole question minus nine and you have y equals negative three x squared minus five x plus k so to solve these two equations simultaneously what we must do basically is we must substitute one of the equations into the other. That's the way to think about it, right? Some people say equate them, and that will work if you if you say equate them in these case, in some cases. But some cases it won't really work to say equate them and make things very complicated for you if you if you try and just you know make the y the subject of both of them and equate them. In this case, it's fine, but I want to teach you a way which is universal that you'll understand what you have to do for every case so what i the way i like to do it is i like to basically uh, do substitution so think of it in terms of substitution so i'm going to take this y over here and i'm going to replace it with x squared plus kx minus nine i'm substituting instead of the y wherever y is in the other equation okay so i'll end up with if i replace this y with that i'm going to have x squared plus kx minus nine is equal to negative 3x squared minus 5x plus k. And then we can make this into a quadratic equation because you can see this x squared is the highest power on both sides. So we can make it say equals zero. We want to have it in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. That's the form we want it in. So we can add 3x squared to both sides. So it becomes 4x squared. We can add 5x to both sides. You'll have plus kx plus 5x. And we have minus nine here and we can subtract k from both sides so minus nine minus k equals zero now what we should understand now is if you want to find the number of so this this equation first of all represents the 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 intersection between these two this represents the intersection between these two and if you want to find the number of times they intersect we can use what's called the discriminant so um, the discriminant is basically if you do you don't have to do this but if you do write out the quadratic formula minus b plus or minus b squared over plus, four, plus or minus square of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a the part of the quadratic formula which determines the number of solutions a quadratic 
equation we'll have is this part under the square root sign, b squared minus 4ac. And what we should understand is if b squared minus 4ac, if b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero, then we'll have two real solutions. Means in this case, it will be the case where these intersect twice. Okay, that's the case when you have b squared minus 4ac. If that's positive, you'll have minus b plus something over 2a, and then the other solution will be minus b minus something minus something over 2a. You'll end up with two different answers. That, that represents two solutions in this case. And if b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, okay, in that case, you're going to have this under here, which will be undefined. And it will give you no real solutions because you're going to you try and put something negative in your calculator and find the square root of it. It will give you a number which is not a real number. So in that case, what will happen? It will be the kind of case like one of them turns up before the other one can can you know intersect with it. There will be no solution. Okay. And the third scenario is when b squared minus four ac. So this is no real solution. And the third scenario is when b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, in which case this becomes 0, so you have minus b plus or minus 0. So you just end up with minus b over 2a, which is just one solution. Okay, and that's going to be uh, one real solution. And sometimes it's called a repeated root, repeated solution. Okay, and that's the case which we're um, concerned with when they just touch once. They just touch and then they meet at that single point p. Okay. So we're looking for that single point P. So we're going to consider this case here. That's the case we have to consider. So here we have to try to write this now in a form conducive to AX squared plus BX plus C. So you got 4X squared. Now your X term is split over KX plus 5X. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factorize out the X. So I'll write it as K plus 5 in brackets times X. That's KX plus 5X. And then your C is going to be minus 9 minus K. So you have a equals 4 and b equals k plus 5. Okay, so b equals k plus 5 and c equals minus 9 minus k. Okay, now we can now use this formula b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0 for one intersection. For one, you can say, Let's call it intersection. Okay, so b is k plus 5. So you have k plus 5 squared minus 4 times a, which is 4 again, times c, which is minus 9 minus k. And we want to, um, that has to equal 0. So k squared plus 10k plus 25. That's going to be minus 16 times minus 9. 16 times 9. 16 times 9, that's going to be 90 plus 54, 144. So it's going to be positive 144. And minus 16 times minus k is going to be plus 16k equals 0. So you've got k squared, and you've got 10, 10, um, 10k. Sorry, this is supposed to be k. It looks like an x. Be careful, be careful. There's no x's in there now, that's a k. Plus 10k. So 10k plus 16k is plus 26k. And 25 plus 144 is 169 equals 0. And k squared plus 26k plus 169 equals 0. That's exactly what we had to show. And that's part A of the question done. Okay, now for part B. It says, hence find the coordinates of P. All right, so now here we have what we found earlier. One second, let's get the thing sorted out. We have the equation that uh, we had to prove k squared plus 26k plus 169 equals zero. This represents the intersection or the, the value of k. This represents the, the basically, uh, the, the, intersection between these two such that you will have just one intersection okay so when these two intersect in such a way that they will just meet one time 
That's what this represents. K squared plus 26K plus 169 equals zero. So if I solve this, I'll find the value of K for which there is just one intersection between them. They basically meet in one place. Okay, so solving that will give me that value of K, which will make these equations such that they will, they will just meet in one place. So solving this, whenever you have to solve something where you know it's a quadratic and there's only one solution, then you should be looking out for perfect squares. And we can see 169 is a perfect square. And if I, if I put k plus 13 squared, this is going to be this factorized because 13 squared is 169 and 2 times 13 is, is 26. So if you expanded this, you're going to get that. So you, can, you should always be looking out for that when you know there's one solution. It will most likely be a perfect square that you get. So that means k plus 13 is equal to 0. So k is equal to negative 13. Okay, so that's the value of k for which there's going to be just one solution between them. So now I can go back to the equation that we formed in our steps when we uh, solve these two simultaneously. When I solve these two simultaneously, we ended up with this equation. And then when we use the discriminant equals zero, we ended up with that equation. So now we go back to this equation. And if you replace k with 13 or with negative 13, that will give us the equation that will, um, you know, the that will give us this equation represents the intersection between those those two curves. When I put k is negative 13, it will represent the equation, okay, that for which there will be just one solution. And then we can find the value of x, and that will be the x coordinate of where they intersect. So this tells us where they intersect. Okay, so when k is equal to negative 13, just replace the k with negative 13 in this equation. And be careful of the signs. So you have 4x squared. And you're going to have plus, minus 13 plus 5 is, is negative 8. So that will, in the end, be negative 8x. <clears throat> and you've got minus 9 plus 13, which is going to be plus 4, equals 0. So we can see that these are all divisible by 4. So you have x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 0. Again, we look for a perfect square. It's x minus 1 squared equals 0. So x minus 1 equals 0, so x equals 1. And we can find the y coordinate by using any of those two. So we've got y equals x squared, and that's going to be minus 13x minus 9. So when x equals 1, y is equal to 1 squared minus 13 times 1 minus 9. That's 1 minus 13 minus 9. That's going to be 1 minus 13 is minus 12. Minus 12 minus 9 is going to be minus 21. So that's y equals minus 21. So the coordinates of the point are 1 and negative 21. Okay. And that should be the same point on here. If you want to check, if you just for a check, we want to see, do we get the same point for x and y in this equation? So you got y equals minus 3x squared minus 5x minus 13. Okay, if you put what if you put x as 1, you're going to get minus 3, minus 5, minus 13. That's minus 8, minus 13, which is minus 21. So that, that checks that when x equals 1, y equals negative, 20, negative 21. So that's a check to see that make sure we've got the right answer. Okay, so that's how you deal with this question. So there's a few steps you have to think about here, which I'm just going to quickly summarize. Firstly, we're looking for the case where the curves just touch at one place. Okay, it's not called a tangent, because tangent is a straight line. That's it would be a straight line on a curve. So they touch at one place. In which case, when we try to solve these two equations simultaneously by substituting one into the other, we end up with a quadratic, which we've got here, and the discriminant of this quadratic has to equal one, zero, so that there's only going to be one solution. So we take the discriminant of this, b squared minus 4ac, and we equate it to zero, and we end up with the equation that they asked us to find in part A. For part B, we have to find the coordinates of the point where they intersect. So what we've done is we have solved this equation that we found. We've got x equal k equals negative 13. And then we put this value of k back into the equation that we formed when we solved these simultaneously. Okay, the one that we took the discriminant from. Okay, so I replaced the k with negative 13 in here. Okay, and that gave me the equation, okay, which... Um, when we solve it, it will find the values of x where they intersect. So we solved it, we got x equals 1, and then we take that value of x and put it back into one of these two equations, 
um, with the value of k being negative 13 in it that we know. And then we find the y value. And if you want to check to make sure that you've done the right thing, you put the same x value into the other equation with the value of k is negative 13 and see, does it give you the same y value? It does. That means both of them will be passing through the same point, 1 minus 21. So that's where they will intersect. And those will be the coordinates of P. So in the end, if you want, you can write, therefore, P is the coordinates minus 1, sorry, 1 and minus 21. 1 and minus 21. And that's the answer to part uh, answer to part B of question four completes the question. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear on the top right of the screen at the end of this video. Other questions from the topic of, um, I guess this is all about quadratics and solving um, quadratic equations, discriminants. It's all under quadratics, I guess. Um, you can find in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And on the top here, you can find um, a video which shows you how to use my channel and find the index documents in it very um, you know and help you find things quickly. Thank you for watching and see you soon.